So advanced financial structures, there's essentially three generic types of financial structures that um, that I refer to as this advanced uh, structure capability. The first is partnership flip structures. The second are lease structures. And the third is uh, single owner balance sheet. Within the partnership flip structure uh, umbrella, uh, we have all equity partnership flips and leverage partnership flips. All equity is all equity and leverage has has debt at the project level. Um, within the all equity part, uh, partnership flip, essentially cash and tax benefits are allocated primarily to the tax investor until uh, that investor can receive a predefined uh, return on his investment, the IRR, at which point the, uh, the flip point is reached. And then the allocations of, of cash and tax benefits might switch over to the developer. The leverage partnership flip is very similar. There's often a, a different allocation of, of benefits, but there, um, and there's debt at the project level, as I mentioned, um, which, which raises the risk for the tax investor. And um, you'll often see a yield or expected um, or required yield on the tax investment uh, about 2%, 200 basis points higher for a leverage partnership flip due to, the, um, due, due to the debt being available to that project. Um, within lease structures, you generically have sale lease back and inverted lease. There's also another one called a leverage lease. Um, within SAM, we only have the ability to simulate currently the sale lease back structure. Uh, within that structure, uh, a developer will sell the project to uh, another entity, the lessor, who will then lease it back to the developer to operate and, and uh, garner revenue from, from power sales. Uh, the inverted lease, um, the ITCs are passed through a, a master lease structure and the tenant will operate the equipment and make lease payments. And with the single owner, the, um, the project stays on that, that original owner's balance sheet and they will take on all uh, benefits and payments. The all equity partnership flip, well, I'm not going to go through this too extensively, but as a quick rundown, that all the numbers here, first of all, are, are uh, uh, just an example. In this example, we have the tax investor putting up 60% of the equity and the developer taking 40, put it, putting up 40%, um, which we consider typical, but definitely not um, the only way it can be structured. Um, up to the flip point, um, there are what we call bifurcated allocations, meaning the, the allocations of cash and tax benefits don't match the investment percentages. Um, first of all, with cash, there's often uh, a pullout of cash for the developer to get back just the capital that they've originally invested, um, and that capability is... Um, is within SAM, um, the, uh, and then after that initial uh, recovery of capital, the the cash and all the tax benefits will go to the tax investor until um, that tax investor reaches its uh, his flip point uh, target IRR. Um, after that flip point, then um, essentially all the allocation of tax and cash benefits will go to the developer. The leverage pro rata flip um, or lever leverage partnership flip is what we, uh, what we refer to as a pro rata structure where the cash and tax benefits are allocated back to the developer and tax equity investor on a pro rata basis based on their, their share of the equity invested. Um, in this structure, the developer isn't expected generally to put up a lot of equity. It can be 1% of the equity required, um, really a very small amount. Um, and the tax investor is putting up a, a much larger share in general. Um, the lender has first lien on the project assets, and the, which raises risk to the tax investor, and the, that's why the, the need for a slightly higher yield. Um, oh yeah. 
after the flip point is reached, virtually all allocations go to the developer, as I mentioned. Within the sale leaseback structure, the developer constructs the project and sells the project outright to the tax investor. The, um, the developer will then lease back the project from the tax investor and make lease payments to, uh, to that lessor. The, um, the lessee, the developer, will operate the project and, and pay the lessor that annual lease payment. Um, and the lease payment is sized to provide the lesser with a, a target return. The, the lessor receives an annual lease payment from the lessee and, and tax incentives and depreciation from ownership of the project. So the lessor will, will get all the, all the uh, tax benefits. And importantly, the, within the last bullet, the each party of the transaction has a separate taxable income. It's, they're not grouped together under a, a, a project taxable income. So the model is, is developed specifically to account for each of their taxable income separately, whereas in the partnership flip, we're really trying to maximize the, the value for the project. Then within the single owner, um, we really have one equity owner um, and there may or may not be project level debt. Um, the owner will fund 100% of, of the equity um, and uh, take on 100% of the, the cash and tax benefits. Um, so there is no flip or other reallocation of, of the cash and tax benefits. So what drives the levelized cost of energy or, or the first year PPA price? under these structures, what, we, um, what we're finding in our analysis um, is that it's really the, not just the target return, as you would expect, but it's often the target year for the tax investor. Um, that is, if you change the target year of, if, uh, if, for example, the, in the all equity partnership flip, it might be an 8.5% return by year eight. Well, if you move that, that target year back, perhaps to 10 or 12, then you can have significantly uh, strong impact on on the uh, first year PPA price or LCOE. Um, but of course, the, the required return uh, pardon us, uh, is, is important as well as the, um, within the leverage partnership flip structure, the, the debt terms. Um, the, the duration of the debt or the tenor, the interest rate, and, and the coverage ratio. Within the uh, sale leaseback structure, the, the lessor required return, as well as the, uh, the target year as well there, um, will have a large impact on the LCOE. Um, and within the single owner, that, that developer required return or, or in debt terms, if, if applicable. Uh, this is just sort of a summary of, of everything I just said, that the cash sharing um, by structure will 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 uh, be bifurcated, for example, under the all equity flip structure, but but mostly pro rata under the the uh, leverage partnership flip. Um, the tax benefits will will um, uh, will flow as as expected and uh, and explained in this table. W one important aspect of the table is that the um, the return target it's within each structure, um, you're solving for slightly different, um, a slightly different metric. The, uh, within the all equity partnership flip, we're essentially solving for the tax investor after tax IRR, uh, as well as the leverage partnership flip. Within the sale lease back, we're, we're solving for the lesser after tax IRR, and then the single owner with, uh, for the owner after tax IRR.